Hey, welcome back to Pedro Station. Thank you, first of all, for tuning in once again to hear some tips or suggestions or reviews or comparisons for anything that's to do with tech. I hope you like my specs. My favorite thing about them is when I do this. <laughs> so this week, I'm gonna talk about music service comparisons. And you can imagine my shock as I was downloading my MP3s via LimeWire that there are new services where you can pay per month and then stream and download as much music as you want. The sun has come out, which is great. I should have done this in the first place. There we go. That's a bit better. Um, <clears throat> Now there's a flurry of music services that are available. Sometimes it's dependent on what device you're using, dependent on price. And I'm gonna go through five of the main competitors that we have available today. So, am I doing this? Um, Amazon Music, Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, and YouTube Music. These are the main five that I'm going to go through. I'm not gonna go through Pandora because now they're only available in the US. So that's not gonna help us here. So streaming music is the most convenient way nowadays to listen to music. You don't have to deal with any type of physical media, whether that's CDs, tapes, vinyl, stuff like that. So physical storage is not an issue, but you do have to take things into account, whether that's smart devices in the home, like smart speakers, and also the mobile device that you have as well. And also availability of music too. Some are slightly larger than others, so you're more likely going to get the songs that you want within one streaming service compared to another. But the great thing about streaming music is the sound quality. Generally, they're just as good as they were back on compact discs. However, there are other services, for example Tidal, that have even better sounding quality music. But the question is, which streaming service is the best for you? So let's begin. First up, we have Amazon Music. Now, there are different versions of Amazon Music out there. You've got Amazon Music Prime, which is included within your Prime membership, and that has about 2 million songs. And then you've got Amazon Music Unlimited, which actually has 70 million songs. Now, the differences between these two is that with Amazon Music Prime, being included within your Amazon Prime membership, you don't pay anything extra, but it has adverts. So between each song, it will play an advert, which can get frustrating. But then if you pay a bit more, you can have access to Amazon Music Unlimited, which removes all the adverts, and then you have access to way more songs, 70 million. And what's featured within Amazon Music is recommended playlists and radio stations that are grouped around artists that you're already listening to. The pros for Amazon Music is, first of all, the price. Because you're already paying for an Amazon Prime membership, you've got Amazon Music Prime included already. So it's basically free. However, if you want to bump it up to Unlimited, then you'd have to pay a price on top, which isn't as much as the other services. Also, another pro is that the lyrics, they pop up automatically when you're listening to the song. And if you buy smart speakers, so say for example an Echo Dot or any other device from Amazon, then you're offered a free membership for a certain amount of time. So you get a lot of freebies with Amazon. You even have the option to increase the membership. So that includes high res music as well. So that's higher than your average standard that you're used to listening to. It even includes music from Sony 360 Reality Audio and Dolby Atmos, if that floats your boat. The cons, it, again, it's Amazon. Um, um, I try to not use Amazon as much as possible because they're dominating the market in everything recently. So contributing to them is, is not ideal personally for me, but if you don't care about that, that's absolutely fine. There's no artist biographies when you go onto their profiles. If you wanna learn more about those artists, then you're just gonna have to Wikipedia them. And the service doesn't include a music locker. Now what a music locker is, is if, if you've already got a library of, of music that you've downloaded to your device, you can then upload it to your library and then store your music there while listening to 
the streaming service as well and Amazon doesn't have this. So I would say that Amazon Music Unlimited is good for those that already have an Amazon Prime account and if they've also got Amazon products around the home. Next up, we have Apple Music. Now with Apple Music, they have one of the largest storage of songs. They have over 70 million songs available. So chances are, if a song has been released, it's gonna be on Apple Music. So with Apple Music, like Amazon, you have curated playlists, but there are playlists that are handcrafted by musicians themselves. And it's perfect for if you're completely sucked into the Apple infrastructure, which is me, unfortunately. So if you've got Apple devices throughout your home, Apple Music integrates perfectly with everything. So the pros and the cons. The pros, it combines your iTunes library or Music Locker, for example. That way you can store your own songs in there and upload them to the cloud and access them everywhere. There are human music experts which curate playlists to help you find music based on what you've previously been listening to. And you can use voice assistants like Siri to control your playlists and search for what you want to hear. Now for the cons, the Apple Music is available on Android devices, but from what I understand, the app isn't as smooth as it is on an Apple device. And some home speakers might not be compatible with Apple Music as well. Next, we have Spotify, probably the most famous out of all the music services available. It has over 50 million songs available and it's available on every device. It offers a number of curated music discoveries, including its own discovery weekly playlist, and it's constantly implementing new ones. Now, I used to use Spotify myself, and then now I moved over to Apple Music, so I have experience with the two, and I've got to say that with Spotify, the user interface is really good and very easy to use. So the pros for Spotify would definitely be the fact that the free version is very robust, and very easy to use. You also have something called Spotify Connect, which is kind of like AirPlay, in that you can stream to other compatible devices to play your music elsewhere from your own device. And because of the user interface, it's super easy to create your own playlist and share them out and make them collaborative if you want to. And another great thing, about Spotify is that when you follow artists, you're then notified when they release new music, which is great. You get it up as a pop-up notification. Now for the cons, the for the free version, you're gonna get adverts again, and they're quite intrusive. They don't pop up in between every song, but when they do pop up, it, it's super annoying. And in the free tier, you can't listen to specific songs. It's constantly shuffling. But overall, I think it's best for people who like to share out their playlists and make them collaborative as well. I I think Spotify is an all-rounder basically. Next we have Tidal. It's partly owned by Jay-Z. Tidal music is amazing if you're looking for the highest sound quality and the fact that it offers lossless audio streaming, which at first I didn't understand but then it, it caught my ear because I thought am I losing something when I'm listening to music? It's identical or even better than listening to an actual compact disc CD. So the pros is that definitely the, the sound quality, it's the best, which even includes Dolby Atmos surround mixes. There's a lot of video content as well, so you can watch music videos and live. Wanna say hello? Oh, hi guys. Vienki, hello. Go on. Look who it is. <laughs> <laughs> Not live, right? Live? Yeah. <laughs> That's not how YouTube works. <laughs> well, there is a live option, but not today. Baby Steps, he's gonna be in some videos, but um... <laughs> Baby Steps. <laughs> anyway, uh, as I was saying, lots of video content, including live streams too. And the profiles of each artist, the artist is quite extensive in comparison to other streaming services. Cons, um, I would say that the apps aren't as well developed as some of the other music streaming services and Apple Music and Spotify seem to have slightly more of a music catalogue in comparison. Plus, also, if you want to listen to some of the higher res music, sometimes you'll need a decoder for your speaker system to get the best out of the music quality. So I would say that Tidal is for those of you that are obsessed with sound quality, but also with an interest in discovering new artists as well. Finally, we have YouTube Music. 
Now YouTube Music used to be called Google Play Music, but now they closed down Google Play Music uh, and consolidated their services within the YouTube platform. Now YouTube Music, you can access through normal YouTube without paying, but again, you'll get adverts played between each track. That's the difference between YouTube Music and YouTube Music Premium. And the great thing about YouTube Music Premium is that contrary to Google Play Music, the user interface is a lot better now than it was before. So YouTube Music has curated radio stations and as opposed to playlists where you have a set amount of songs within a playlist that once they're done, it finishes. With YouTube Music Premium, the radio stations play endlessly and they're updated all the time. So the pros and the cons uh, for YouTube Music, definitely a pro commercial free streaming and access to over again 70 million songs i'm beginning to think that the amount of songs in the world is literally 70 million another pro is that they have a locker system which they pulled over from google play music so that you can store any of your own music as well that you've previously downloaded but then the cons is that it's very difficult to navigate through your own music library the user interface isn't as friendly as it should be and music connectivity can be a bit flaky if you're trying to send the music to another device, especially in comparison to Spotify that has uh, Spotify Connect. For example, if you're using a browser to listen to YouTube music, you can't cast the music to another device, but you could in um, Google Play Music. But I would say that the biggest con for YouTube music is that with the free version, you get a really reduced service and limited amount of songs in comparison to going premium. But that's what you get for going free. But YouTube Music is really good for people who use YouTube a lot and it can be more compatible with Android devices too. So overall, the price for each of these services are around the same, but other features that you should look out for is things like a music locker where you can store your own music, uh, compatibility to other devices around your home, also what you want to get out of your music. If you want higher quality sounding music, then Tidal, for example, might be a better option for you. But I've included a comparison of all the prices and family options as well within this video so you can see and make your decision on, on which one you would prefer. You might already be in one service and are considering another and I bet you're thinking yes but I've already created everything through Apple Music for example, why would I start in a new service? Well, there are websites and apps which I'm gonna include in the description where you can import your music and your playlists instantly. I did that with Spotify to Apple Music and I literally didn't have to do any work. I just used an app, connected the two services, imported them and then everything was exactly the same but just within a different music service. It's so good. But there we have it. That's my comparison of music services. I hope you found them useful. I say that every week. Sorry about the interruption from the husband but I will get him to join in more videos as we get along. I just need to persuade him. He needs a bit of coaxing. But that's it from me so don't forget to like and subscribe.